Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Rob Eisenberg. I'm happy to be with you today talking about some of the performance innovations that we've been making with fast web components at Microsoft. Um, I am a principal UX architecture and tools lead uh, on the FAST team who builds the core uh, web component technology that we're using at Microsoft. And later in the talk, I'll be joined by David Rickard, who is the principal software engineering manager on Start Experiences. And he'll share uh, a specific case study where we made some big improvements to uh, the experience based on web components. Uh, so in this talk, we're going to start with a, a brief introduction about what are web components, just to make sure everybody's on uh, the same page. We'll talk about raw web component performance based on some uh, experimentation and research that we did uh, last year. Uh, I'll talk a little bit then about what uh, FAST is and how that relates to web components. And we'll look at specifically some FAST performance numbers and also how FAST is being used in the wild, so to speak, at Microsoft and various teams and products. And then that's when David will jump in and uh, go over a specific case study um, with the Edge new tab page. So with that as a brief introduction, let's get started. So first, what are web components? And uh, to really understand web components, we have to think uh, back in time a little bit about the history of the web. So if we go back to the earlier days of the web, people started to try and build different experiences. There was no component model built into HTML. So we can think about things even in the early days, how people were trying to solve this problem with things like prototype and scriptaculous and then jQuery and Moo tools. And then we get into more recent things like React and Angular, Svelte, Vue, et cetera. And the, the, the virtual explosion of uh, different frameworks and libraries that were all sort of oriented around this problem of enabling folks to be able to build reusable components that they, they could um, used to build larger experiences in the browser. And all this uh, happened in the community because there was nothing that was part of HTML that solved this problem. There was no component model. There was no extensibility model to HTML itself. Well, as those um, uh, experiments and libraries and things were being built out in the community over a period of 15 or so years, um, there was also work going on in the standards body to try and solve this problem directly uh, in HTML, directly in CSS. And Web Components then is that collection of web standards that we have developed and implemented across all the major browsers that enable this native component model directly as part of HTML. So this involves things like the ability to create new tags, new elements uh, in HTML, so custom HTML elements. Uh, things like Shadow DOM that allow us to encapsulate the rendering of a component and to encapsulate the styles. So that the styles inside of a component don't leak out and break other components or the rest of a page. Um, this includes things like HTML templates that allow us to um, create a DOM shape and rapidly stamp out copies of that, like we would need to do if we're instantiating many different components of the same type. And this goes on to things in CSS, like CSS properties and CSS parts, and even into the JavaScript language itself with some of the new features that came around in 2015, such as classic uh, classes and static. Uh, getters and setters. And these the standards continue to evolve uh, and we continue to add additional standards, just making the component model of the browser richer and richer over time. But today we've shipped in every major browser all the core standards that are needed to have a native set of reusable components without needing uh, a specific library or framework and to make those components interoperable uh, across um, uh, across different libraries that might be the implementation details of those components. Uh, and so that's also one of the great benefits of this technology, which is that it's, it's agnostic to any particular library. Because web components are HTML elements themselves, they literally inherit from HTML element, they are interoperable with any library or framework that's been created that knows how to work with DOM. And so, you know, here at the Reliable Web Summit, you know, one of the things we're talking about is what are some of the, the longer term um, patterns and practices? How do we, you know, go about our process of building the web and building on top of the web and do it in a reliable and responsible fashion? And web components are actually quite a big part of that because 
of the interoperable nature of them. Uh, and, and it allows us to build now for the first time these reusable components um, that are not going to have to be thrown away the next time some new framework or library comes along, right? Because this is part of the platform, it's around you know, forever now, effectively. It, they're here to stay. And so investing in this uh, technology is an investment that will return for many, many years to come. And this is really part of a principle that we have on the FAST team, which is to favor the open web as much as possible. And that just results in, in longer lived code, more interoperable code, a better investment in terms of your skills, um, et cetera. Uh, and so web components are a big part of that. And we're very excited about um, these standards shipping in every major browser uh, at the beginning of 2020 last year and excited about the possibilities that it's opening up for us at Microsoft and for many of our customers. So how do web components perform? Um, well, we ran an experiment where we implemented the same uh, card style user interface, both with React and web components, uh, so that we could see what the performance numbers looked like. Um, in web components, it was done with vanilla JS, and in React, it was done with React and then also JSS as the um, CSS and JS solution. Um, and what you can see is that on desktop, we saw that the desktop uh, web components performed seven times better than the React equivalent. And on mobile, we saw that the web components performed six times better than the React equivalent. Uh, now this uh, performance comes down to three different areas. There's the scripting cost, the layout cost, and the paint cost. Um, now the, the the paint and the layout are virtually the same uh, across both web components and React, but the scripting cost had a huge difference. As you can see, that's really where the performance came from. And so that can also then be broken down into three areas. Uh, the scripting cost um, uh, relative to JS bundle and parsing compilation. So React is much, much heavier in terms of the size of the library, the amount of code that has to be downloaded, that has to be parsed and executed compared to web components. Because web components, again, are leveraging the platform, which means everything's already there. The core of it's already there in the browser itself. So there's a big difference in terms of uh, your JS bundle size, parse and compilation process. Uh, the next big difference we saw was in um, the absence of virtual DOM and web components. So the, the reconciliation step uh, that's part of the way that React works is actually quite expensive. Uh, and so removing the virtual DOM and instead being based on an efficient usage of pure DOM um, yielded good performance in terms of the scripting cost. And then finally, um, eliminating the CSS and JS solution that is used typically used by React also improved performance. Uh, because these kinds of solutions involve, again, executing and running a bunch of code before CSS um, is ready and can be used, that all can kind of go away by just using uh, native CSS techniques uh, with Shadow DOM and web components. And so those are kind of the three areas that came into um, the numbers around scripting costs, and we just saw these really, really big improvements. And so that was enough for us to basically take it to the next step and start doing more real world work with web components and building out a system for building web components. Uh, and that's where we come to FAST. And so FAST is really uh, a system for building adaptive uh, user interfaces. And um, it's a collection of libraries that you can opt into to, to build these various user interface elements. So you can start with something like FAST element, which is used to build web components. Uh, when you go about building a web component in vanilla JS, you end up writing a lot of boilerplate code. It's a low level API that gives you the capabilities, but there's a lot of repetition, there's a lot of boilerplate. So we've kind of taken care of that for you, extracted that and got that out of the way. So you can just use fast element and that will give you a very terse and simple way of building web components that's declarative and that is efficient in terms of its rendering and uh, its use of memory, et cetera. So fast element is the bottom of our stack for building web components. On top of that, we've kind of gone to the next level of, of thinking about reuse. And so uh, Fast Foundation introduces the concept of building design systems and building component libraries. So whereas Fast Elements about building individual components of any type, Fast Foundation is about building systems of components. 
And so inside of FAST Foundation, you actually have primitives around building design systems. So for example, things like a design token is actually modeled in there. Uh, and so you can build design systems in terms of these tokens that manipulate and enable the components to adapt to different contexts. But also inside of FAST Foundation, there's a library of almost 40 base components for all the standard UX that you would normally build. So buttons and tree views and data grids, accordions, checkboxes, combo boxes, selects, all sorts of things. But what's important about foundation is that they're not styled. They're just implemented in terms of their state, their behavior, their events, their keyboard uh, navigation, basic accessibility, uh, but the styles are not, uh, not bound to them because these are designed to be building blocks for you to create design systems with. So you don't have to re-implement all of those pieces. You can just apply the styles of your system to those ready-made base components. And so on top of that, we've gone and actually built a couple of libraries of ready-made components that are two different design systems. One is the Fluent UI web components, which is Microsoft's design system. And the other is the fast web components, which are uh, something that our team builds as a sort of industry facing um, design system that's highly configurable for you all to drop in and, and easily brand to your own experiences. And then of course, fast builds a number of other things. We have utilities, plugins and helpers that come into play when you're building larger experiences. So things for animation, dependency injection, routing with web components, et cetera. And we have tools that are associated with web components, uh, design and development tools. So that's kind of the fast system, but it's all built around web components in these web standards and helping people um, adopt and use them efficiently. And we've seen really good performance numbers uh, from FAST itself. Again, if we're comparing to React, we've seen that the paint performance is about 70% faster. We use about 34% less memory and uh, startup time, which is really important, is about 104% faster than React. Uh, so these are all based on a, a kind of de facto standard in the community known as the Krauss benchmarks. Uh, and these are just some numbers that kind of demonstrate uh, what we were seeing when we went all in with web components and, and built out something that was production ready for building the components. So we're really happy with the performance we've seen of kind of the raw libraries and approaches and techniques that we've been taking uh, to building these components, especially compared to um, other um, non-web component based libraries and solutions that are out there. So uh, who's using web components? Well, there's tons of different companies using web components. You know, Google's using web components. Nintendo is using web components. SpaceX is using web components. Adobe, Salesforce, all sorts of different companies. And of course, we're using them now more and more at Microsoft. And so on the screen, I just have a few examples of places that we are using web components. I mentioned the official Fluent UI web components. Um, that are for our official design system. The Edge new tab page, which you're going to see a little bit about in a minute, is actually built with web components. Parts of the Edge browser are now built with web components. So if you've used the new Edge shopping experience, that's built on top of our Fluent UI web components. Aspects of the Bing homepage, um, M365 Partner Center, docs.microsoft.com, and even the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. All these technologies are uh, built on top of FAST and typically our Fluent UI web components. And there's many, many more that I can't share with you right now, but I thought it would be interesting for you to see just a few places inside of Microsoft uh, that you might know of, might have experienced perhaps through Edge Shopping or something like that. Um, these are places that have already shipped um, <clears throat> our Fluent UI web components. So uh, with that, it's kind of an introduction. I wanna hand off now uh, to my friend David Rickard, who is Principal Software Engineering Manager on Start Experiences, and he's going to share a little bit about a specific experience that he had um, implementing web components on a, a critical uh, experience that we ship at Microsoft. So David, I'm going to let you take it away. Okay. Uh, thanks, Rob. Uh, so we decided to use the fast web element to uh, upgrade the uh, Edge new tab page to use web components. Uh, and so we sort of chose to do this in two phases. One is that we just started uh, changing over some components while having both the fast web element libraries and the React libraries on the, on the page at the same time. Uh, and so in this step, which we call the hybrid mode, uh, we were able to reduce our time to visually ready, which is uh, what we use to measure performance, reduced it by 20%. Uh, so that's pretty good, uh, given that we're uh, still loading in both libraries. Uh, and recently uh, we were able to do a full conversion 
and went all the way over to the web components and got rid of the React libraries. Uh, and we did a reduction of 31%. And we are also uh, uh, on the inspirational mode, uh, we also saw a bigger decrease uh, of 35% uh, for our TTDR. Uh, and there are also a bunch of other uh, benefits that we got from it beyond just performance. Uh, our model for writing components became a lot simpler because we were able to ditch the Redux state that we had been using, and we can use the direct template binding that the fast element offers. Uh, so instead of having the actions, the reducers, the props, the state, um, and like the connector, those all go away in, in just in favor of one integrated component, which also means less testing because instead of having to test three different things, you're just testing one thing. Uh, and there's a lot less just grunt work, um, moving things around, dealing with, um, you know, moving things from props to the component and back and forth and doing callbacks. Uh, so there was just a lot of benefits there in terms of the development. And um, another thing that really helped us out was uh, the, it worked really well for delay loading uh, elements. So for example, on the new tab page, uh, we have some non-critical elements such as the settings gear uh, that we can defer until after the important stuff like the background image and the search and the top sites have finished. Uh, and so in the React, it, we sort of had to do a lot of custom code to make this work, uh, and it was a little bit awkward, but it, it works really nicely uh, with the uh, web component paradigm um, because the parent can just render the component immediately, so it just writes out uh, that element, uh, and it just sits in the DOM as an HTML unknown element uh, until uh, the delay load happens and you tell it what to do. Uh, so, for example, you would write in that element, then you can uh, bring in the definition with a dynamic import. So, you'd import your module that has the web component definition. Uh, and then it would happen, auto the definition would happen automatically if you're using the custom element decorator. Or you can manually decide to define it later with fast element.define. Uh, and then when that happens, the browser is just going to go through the DOM, find all the places that have that element and fill them out, attach the shadow DOM, uh, inflate all the templates, load all your JS and everything like that. But before that point, uh, it doesn't uh, execute any of that JS for that module, so it works really well for uh, making a fast uh, loading page. And that's all I had. Thank you. Thanks, David. I really appreciate the, the insight into the work that was done on the new tab page. I, I hope the community will really appreciate seeing, you know, how some of this is, is being used at Microsoft and the real impact it's having on the, you know, very serious experiences that we're uh, shipping. A new, new tab page is, um, you know, experienced by everybody that uses the Edge browser, and the Edge browser, I think, is deployed on some billion devices or something of this nature. So. Um, this is not a, a small investment, and it, it was a, a really significant decision to make, and uh, we were happy to see the benefits that we got from adopting web components in this case. Well, that's all we have to share with you today. Hopefully that was a good informative introduction to web components, a little bit about FAST and how we think about um, leveraging web standards, as well as seeing some of the places um, and the impact that it's having inside of Microsoft. Our philosophy is, is really to adopt the open web, uh, and web components are a really nice, new, innovative part of that that can bring a lot of benefits, uh, whether it's performance or reusability. Uh, and so uh, we're excited about it. We've seen really good results, and uh, looking forward to, to uh, seeing what you all come up with as well. Thanks. Hey, it's Joe Eames with ng-conf. If you like that video, be sure to click subscribe either here or here, somewhere over here. And if you're looking for something more, here's another video for you to watch here or there or somewhere.